Hi, welcome back to Beaconette Life. We're back here in the kitchen again. Finally, I will be making a veggie Alfredo pasta dish uh, for tonight. So I just wanted to show you that recipe and how I prepare it. Of course, it will not be exact measurements because I just kind of put certain ingredients together and just kind of go with a feel and taste with that. So of course, you know, you would do the same with that. For the Alfredo sauce, I will be using soaked cashews that soaked overnight. These are raw cashews. And with that, I will be adding coconut milk. And of course, I will be adding in nutritional yeast to give it that cheesy flavor. Of course, onion powder, some additional garlic powder. I will add in a little bit of sea salt and I will also add in white pepper. I will also be adding in oregano, parsley, and some Italian seasoning. But that's all I will be adding into actual the sauce. The pasta I will be using is gonna be the Kamut Spirals Country Crock Plant-Based butter. I'll use that blended with a little bit of the extra virgin olive oil. going to add a little bit of lemon juice into the Alfredo sauce. I will be using the Better Than Bouillon roasted garlic base. I like to add a little bit of that in my pasta water as it's boiling just to add some extra flavor into the pasta itself. And we're going to add in some, I had a little bit of chopped spinach and kale left in the freezer. That will be added into it as well once I'm ready to combine the sauce and the pasta together. These are the extra things that are going to be added. Got uh, broccoli florets on a discount price at Super Targets. And I have a yellow bell pepper and white onion in here. Okay, we are back. The pasta has finished cooking. That's just over on the stove, sitting in the water. And the roasted garlic is finished. As you can see, it's a little brown on the top. And that's finished. So we're gonna go ahead and make the Alfredo sauce first. All right, so we're gonna put in the one cup of cashews that were soaked. So the measurements are not going to be exact on this. So I'm going to go ahead and pour in about half of this can. And add in the juice of a half of fresh lemon. So we're going to add in that lemon juice. So that's going to also be liquid in that as well. And we will go ahead and add in our roasted garlic. We and normally I'm just going to use this whole bowl because I love garlic. And when you roast the garlic, the garlic flavor is not as pronounced when it's raw or you're using garlic powder. The roasted garlic just gives it more of a milder taste. I'm going to go ahead and add in some garlic powder. Definitely going to add in about a teaspoon of onion powder. And nutritional yeast as i said this is a very good source of um vitamin vitamin b12 which is very important to a vegan diet um so you want to make sure that you're getting your b12 um, in your food and this is a very good source of uh, b12 we're going to go ahead i don't see anything else i need to add in here okay i'm just stopping i just want to kind of look at the consistency yeah, i'm gonna definitely need to add some more i'm gonna add the rest of this coconut milk pour this right in i let that go about a minute and I'm just going to check the consistency and see if I need to add some of the plant-based milk I got in there. The consistency looks good for a nice thick sauce. Um, this is what it's looking like. Um,
And this is just some sea salt. A half of a teaspoon. That's where you're just blending in the basic ingredients. You may have to go back and adjust the seasoning based on your personal preference. Taste it again to make sure to wipe off that. Okay. Let's see. Go in with another finger. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good right there. Okay. So we end up making about 28 ounces of sauce based on the measurement on the blender. So I will more than likely use all of this because I did use a half a box of the pasta. And as you know, pasta soaks up sauce like a sponge. So I did need to have some extra just to make sure that when it absorbed, it was still moist and enough sauce to um, have in there because I'll more than likely end up eating this tomorrow uh, for my lunch or dinner. Okay, so we're back. I'm not gonna worry about trying to get on camera. I guess you'll see my hands, so to speak. But I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my pan. And again, I use a separate cookware for my vegan meals that I prepared. This is Fiberware, it's the brand. And this is a very healthy brand in the sense of it doesn't have toxins in the cookware. It's ceramic, but it doesn't have the PFASs and all those acronyms um, that you can find. So when you're getting your cookware, be aware of that as well. Most traditional nonstick does have toxins in that process that they use to create the non-stick coating. And as I've shared before, I'm the only one that's vegan in my family. So it's easier for me to kind of just maneuver everything around me, so to speak, without having to do a family. But I've, I've been at a point where I was vegetarian for a few years in my thirties. So at that time, my kids were younger and I did cook two separate meals. So it, it can still be done. Um, it just takes a lot of preparation by being vegetarian. You're still eating dairy. So a lot of times I would cook and eat, you know, the same sides for, for uh, my family as well as myself. I would just substitute the meat item. I would, at that time, it wasn't a lot of choices. So I might would just do, um, at that time, tofu or some of the Morningstar brand was very popular during that time so i might would do their nuggets or chicken fillet sandwich or whatever but um i do not buy a lot of processed meats anymore beyond meat is one that i like as far as the burgers and the brocks if we're grilling out for a holiday or something i may get it at that time i choose that particular brand because it's not um any soy in it uh, but it is made with a lot of oils. The sodium content is high, so it is not a healthy version, um, a vegan um, option, so to speak, to eat. But I make the personal choice to eat it sparingly here or there at different times. So it's not anything I eat 90% of my time. It's more like a 5 or 10% window because we're not grilling out that often. So I'm going to add in olive oil as well as the plant-based butter or plant butters. They just have it printed here. I'm just cutting yellow bell pepper. I love the multicolored peppers because I just think it makes the food look pretty. I wish I did have... Um, some red and orange, but all I've got left is yellow. So we're gonna use what's on hand. As I say, just always stay mindful of what you have on hand and what's in your pantry. And then, um, you know, just try your best to utilize those items. So you're not throwing anything out. Nothing is being wasted. We definitely don't want to do that as high as everything is this day and time. 
So I'm just going to dice these up. So I'm just going to let that go ahead and start softening up while I'm dicing my white onion. Really big. So I'm just going to add that in there. Turn this down just a little bit. Because I just kind of want everything to just kind of soften up a little bit. My broccoli florets snacks. I got these actually on a discount price at Super Target. And this bag does let me know that it's been washed, trimmed, and ready to eat. It actually would be one that would be a steamable bag. So I, I don't feel a need to personally go back and rewash it. But that is your preference um, with that. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to put in here. I'm just going to kind of cut these down and see how much is in here. I'm going to let these go ahead and go in because I do want them to soften a little bit. And those thick stalks, let me just kind of cut those down a little bit. But these are primarily the florets. Um, if I had some mushrooms, I would definitely add that in. I don't have any. So this is one of them dishes we just use them what is already on hand. I was not making a special trip to the store just to get mushrooms. Because I try to do my grocery store shopping on Saturdays. That's usually what I do. Once in a while, I might go out during the week if needed for something. But I try to just uh, wait until Saturday. That's just my day to have. Kind of like my little me time indirectly. Some of them might find it a little weird. <laughs> But I've always just like going to the grocery store. I love it. Um, when my kids was younger, they weren't <laughs> they weren't allowed to come with me to the grocery store, so to speak. Um, that was just my way of having some me time, and um, I just enjoy the grocery store. I, I like just looking at different things, um, budgeting, and determining the best bang for my buck, so to speak. So it's just something I've always enjoyed. I like going to the grocery store. Um, as you know, probably from previous videos, you know that I like to hit probably at least a bare minimum of three grocery stores on the weekend. That's what I do. Um, and as I said, they're all right there near each other. So I'm not going out of the way per se at all doing that. But I'm one that I'm going to stretch my dollar as much as I can while eating the way that I choose to with this lifestyle. And just whoever's got to sell, that's what it's going to be. And I do try to create my meals strictly from those sale items and then also being mindful of what I already have on hand. So as you guys know... Um, that I videoed before. I like to do a food inventory around the beginning of the month to determine what I need to, what I've got on hand, what I'm going to get. I usually try to do a larger, bulkier shopping near the beginning part of the month for the most part. And then throughout the month, I just um, only get from the store what I just need to get to cook and make meals from what I already have on hand. And that's usually what I do. So in this particular case, and I did end up using all that broccoli. And it wasn't as much as I thought it was going to be, so that's good. It was just enough in my opinion. So I'm just going to kind of let that cook down just a little bit. But um, as I was saying, I do try to cook with what I have on hand, and that's kind of where this meal came from. 
I was just looking at my cabinets and saying, okay, well, I've got some pasta, got raw cashews, so immediately I'm thinking uh, Alfredo pasta with that. And I also had some crushed tomatoes on hand, so I could have did a pasta dish either with the Alfredo or a tomato sauce base, but I just was in the mood for Alfredo. So, the only thing I had bought for this dish was um, the garlic, because I wanted some fresh garlic in this. I didn't I used the garlic powder, but I wanted some fresh garlic for the actual sauce. So, I'm going to season this up a little bit, because of course the veggies in here doesn't have any seasoning on it, so you want every part of your dish seasoned, so I'm just going to add a little bit of sea salt. Black, I'm going to say black pepper. This is the white pepper. Of course, going back to onion powder that goes in everything savory that I'm cooking most of the time, as well as garlic powder. And I'm going to wait before I add in the Italian seasoning, oregano, and all of that. So, that'll be on the near the end part. But this is about fine for me with um, where I want the broccoli to be. This one got a little bit green. Hopefully you can see that. Let me put the light on. It's getting a little dark looking in here. We have a little bit of light on the subject. Hopefully that's a little bit better. So that's just the broccoli, the Vidalia onion, and yellow bell pepper. So at this point, I'm going to go in and add in, here's my Kamut pasta. Oh, Lord, I'm spilling water. But I'm um, just going to put this in here. And I like to save the pasta water until I'm finished, just in case if I need to thin this out for any reason. The pasta water is a good um, starchy substitute to thin it out without it being watery. And then that pasta water is also flavored, because remember I added the roasted garlic uh, better than bouillon and made a little broth to boil the pasta in. I'm going to mix this in real quick and then I'll go and add my chopped spinach and kale. The chopped spinach and kale just came as a combo bag, a big bag that I got from um, BJ's and I was just down to the last little bit. So I wanted to go ahead and use it up. So we're gonna go ahead and get that completely finished and cleaned up. I love when I kind of to make sure I've used everything and I don't have to throw anything away because I left it too long in the freezer and it got freezer burned or in the fridge. So, now I've added that spinach. Let me stop and add a little seasoning to the spinach and kale mixture there. I should have added it before, so I could have done it, I guess, all at one time, but that's fine. And of course, it's gonna be the same seasonings. Onion powder, garlic powder, white pepper, and a little bit of sea salt. Okay. So now I'm just getting ready to mix this in. I hope you guys have seen a video of, you know, just doing a food inventory and seeing what you already got on hand for meals. You may not even need to go to the grocery store. As it happens with me, sometimes I may not need to go until a couple of weeks into that month. So... 
gonna get a, this is just a close up of that, which looks really good just by itself. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in our Alfredo sauce. Let me turn that down. Um, but yeah, doing a food inventory is a great idea. That way you kind of already know what you have on hand. You're not repeat buying, so to speak. I do make a little list for myself of anything that I just actually do need. And then also, on uh, Wednesdays, I go through, it's usually when I like to make my list, I go through to see what items are on sale. Usually the Lost Leader items are on the front of the ad. I have an app that I use for Aldi, Lidl, Food Lion, Wegmans, Sprouts, um, that I actually just go through seeing what everybody has on sale. And then also seeing who has organic items on sale. A lot of times I can go to Sprouts with no worries and getting whatever I want for the most part organic with no problem. Sometimes when you're going to other stores, they just have certain products, select products um, that they may carry that's organic. So it's fine. I just kind of make a note and compare the price. If it's cheaper for me to get organic mini cucumbers at Aldi versus getting the organic ones at Sprouts and I get them at Aldi. So I'm not loyal per se to a specific store. I just have the stores that I know I can utilize to get the items that I want and then also have the option of organic items that I choose to buy. And as I said, sometimes I will get a conventional product um, that's not organic just because of the sale price maybe at that time. But for the most part, I try to get as much organic as possible. Um, and I'm pretty much getting to the point that I'm just going to choose to switch to only organic um, but to help with the cost of that compared to your conventional or traditional grown products or produced items I will just make sure that I'm using that item stretching it as much as I can not just using it as a one one thing one time deal or item I try to get as many servings out of it as possible um, because again it does cost more but you have to kind of also understand what you're paying for you're paying for uh, the quality of that produce that that farmer is taking time to grow without pesticides herbal sites um, your toxins and things that have been linked to cancer. It's just a fact. It's just the truth. Um, so when different things are sprayed on the uh, food to kill insects and things like that, um, that's not good for us as humans because that goes into our system. So let me try this and see how everything turned out. Let's see. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I get a piece of broccoli with my pasta. So we'll see here. Mmm. That's perfect. I don't need to add nothing else. Um, the pasta is tender. Um, I don't do al dente too much. But I will um, stop the pasta cooking at a certain point and just let it sit in the warm water until I'm ready to use it because I know it will still continue to cook. And then even when you 
I'm mixing it in sauces, the heat from that is gonna still continue to cook it some. But this is perfect. I'm just gonna cut this off. I'm not gonna let this cook down anymore. Um, the broccoli end up getting tender just the way I like it. It's not real soft. Um, it's still got a little firmness to it, but it's like a tender firmness, if that makes sense. It's not, you know, real hard, like it's just completely raw. So that is my Alfredo veggie pasta. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And that's the result. I guess the pasta sauce is showing up too well up there. But plus, trust me when I say it's plenty of Alfredo sauce up here. Um, oh, I did almost forget to add my Italian seasoning and my oregano and parsley. So I'm going to go in and add that now. But I hope you guys will make this or some version of it. At least go with the general idea and just kind of get creative with whatever you want to add into it. Like I said, if I had more vegetables and stuff, I probably would have added um, some carrots and red bell pepper because I like color. Um, you could have easily done some. I did have some cherry tomatoes in there, but I didn't think about it early enough, so... I may go back and just add some to my actual individual dish when I make it. And that'll give me like a little red color in there. Because I like to have different colors in my food. Okay, so I'm just mixing up the Italian seasoning, the oregano, and the parsley that I just added. So that adds a little bit of extra flavor. But thank you so much for joining me back this evening for another cooking segment. It has definitely, it's definitely been a while, but um, like I said, I put up a video, I think it was Sunday. Uh, just been very busy with life from a personal perspective, so just hadn't had a time to really squeeze this in because it's, it's I, just really, really been busy. So um, I was glad to get back in here and put up another video for you. Um, please leave a comment below of just your favorite pasta dish or Alfredo dish um, and share with me in the comments. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I hope you will subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I hope that you will like this video and also share it with someone else. And remember, you're on your journey, so you you don't have to rush it. Focus on your journey and not the destination. We don't have an end in this. This is a lifestyle. So just do things at your own pace. It's not a rush. You're not in competition with anyone. Make little small changes where you can, and it will pay off for better health in the end. Thanks again, and you have a good evening. Bye.